sponsored by West Beer. Today we're here with Paul Zerden. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thanks Lucinda. How are you? I'm absolutely brilliant, thanks. So Good. tell us a bit about your show. Well, um, it's, um, it's a comedy show. Uh, it's got puppets in it. Uh, it's got me in it. And it's kind of a mixture of stand-up comedy. And I think the way I would describe it is kind of uh, a one-man kind of muppety type stand-up sitcom. And yeah, then you say, what does that mean? Uh, and it means it's me and it's my puppets and it's stand-up and it's comedy and it's ventriloquism. I'm a ventriloquist, yeah. but I try and keep that bit quiet because people seem to hate ventriloquists. Yeah, you sort of, I've watched a lot of your clips and stuff and the Royal Variety performance and everything. And right. what makes you different from all the other ventriloquists I've seen is the fact that you openly admit the fact that it's it's you speaking yeah and sort of you know and that makes it even more funny and it makes it sort of a more modern way of doing it mm -hmm. and so what what made you want to do that sort of bring attention to the fact that it it was you speaking rather than sort of trying to keep the illusion ventriloquism is um is a very old-fashioned art and until recently people have a very kind of um blinkered view of it and, I, and they have a certain image when you say ventriloquist quite often people go more often than not, they'll think, oh, it's some old bloke with some creepy looking doll, and it's, you know, something that harks back to the 70s when there were TV shows with lots of ventriloquists mm -hmm. and things. And um, it doesn't have to be like that. And, and that's the reason why I started doing ventriloquism with, with Muppety type puppets, because everyone loved the Muppets, and I was brought yeah. up on the Muppets. Uh, and I always wanted to do something that, that involved comedy and puppets and Muppet type puppets, and so that's why I used those. Um, and it's, I think it's important that you take the Mickey out of it, because what you do you know, what, the whole nature of it when you're using the puppet. And I do stand up about being a ventriloquist and using voices without puppets as well. So it isn't just a bloke and a puppet. But the reason I take the mickey out of it is, is because uh, it's such a weird thing to do. And so you've kind of got to, once you kind of take the piss out of it, then then you can go, right, we, look, we, know, we all know this is a bit, a bit weird. It's a bit freaky. Uh, but I think pointing it out every so often helps, really. And so that you let the audience in on the fact that you know it's a bit shit, but it doesn't have to be, it can be fantastic. Yeah. And it's, it's another, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all about the comedy, and if it's not funny, then you're just a bloke standing there doing funny voices and yeah. it not being funny. So it's all about the comedy. The comedy's the most important thing. Yeah. Tell me about the, the sort of um, fake dummy mouth that you've been putting on people. It's fantastic. Well, I did um, my Sponge Fest show a few uh -huh. years ago up here, um, and that featured a, uh, a piece where I got someone out of the audience and put this little mask on and had a... Uh, had a little um, controller from behind and gave them a squeaky voice and made them a bit, a bit camp and a bit silly. Um, and it was such a such a big hit that lots of other people started doing it and doing similar versions of it. So I thought, well, I'll up the ante a bit and I'll get a man and a woman out of the audience. Um, and now I do get a man and a woman out of the audience and um, he has a very bush voice, she has a very feminine voice and then they, it turns out they have marital problems and they tell me to get, get lost and I leave them on their own and then they come to life without me. Uh, and still, and I'm still doing their voices, and then I then I come back on stage, and I'm not touching them, but they're still, their mouths are still moving, and it kind of opens up a whole new world. It's almost like being a hypnotist in a way, because you yeah. can get them to do, you know, more or less anything within reason. And so that's kind of the big hit of the show mm -hmm. this year, the big part of the show, which I'm loving doing. Um, and it's all kind of, you know, I roughly I know what I'm doing, kind of. Um, but it's sort of improvised as well because yeah. everyone's different and that's what I love about it because you never know quite what they're going to do. Yeah. So that's a way of doing ventriloquism in a, new, in a new way. You don't have to have your hand up the arse of a puppet. So what have you got planned after the Fringe uh, for the sort of next year or so? Um, I go... Uh, where do I go? Um, I can't think where I'm going after this, really. Um, I'm just waiting until we get to the end of this, yeah. this bit first. Um, I'm, I do a lot of one-nighters all over the place. I've been touring for the last three years, so I'm going to tour probably next year. Um, and I, I get to do, thanks to YouTube, right, I get to do um, gigs all over the world. And well, I you've do had over of, three million hits, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. It's, been quite, it's, been, it's been quite a lot of people that I'm looking at the clips. And, and, and on the back of that, you get booked for a private function. So I flew over to Argentina last year, literally to do 15 minutes at an after dinner. Um, and then, you know, I work in Hong Kong, I work in... Um, America, Vegas, um, all over the place. So I've got I've got kind of one nighters all over all over the place Brilliant. up until Christmas, and then Christmas I go into the wonderful world of pantomime. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why I did that. Um, I don't do that in Panto. Um, and uh, I'm the, I'm in Panto at the Hippodrome in Birmingham this year with John Partridge from um, EastEnders, who's he's in chorus line at the moment in London, and uh, Gok Kwan 
So there's All a right. mixture for you. <laughs> um, and I love that. And that's the one time when you do pantomime when I can be on stage and interact with other people, mm-hmm. other real people, rather than just me standing on stage talking to myself for an hour. So um, yeah, I've got quite a busy year, really, Brilliant. luckily. So do you want to tell us when and where your show's on? Uh, which one? This one? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, the, um, Gilded Balloon. It's Paul Zerd in No Strings. And um, it's at 8 o'clock. Brilliant. <laughs> so this is Sam. I know. No, no, I was just telling Lucinda and the crew. Right. What are we doing? All right. How are she's, you? She's cute. <laughs> So this is Lucinda, Lucinda, Sam. Alright. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You come to see the show? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> when? Um, whenever I get a day off. <laughs> Which day is that? Um, usually Sundays, from our Sundays. Well, come tomorrow. Uh, I might actually come tomorrow. <laughs> that could be a show. <laughs> She's coming tomorrow. Yes, I'm going to go tomorrow. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming and speaking to us today. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. I'm listening, to sh- <laughs> I'm listening to show you've been watching Waffle TV. Thank you.